resuming debate, uh, we have seven minutes remaining uh, for the Honourable Member for Halifax. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to my colleagues, and thanks for letting me know how much time's left. Um, I've been listening to the debates today with keen interest, and I had an opportunity earlier to ask a question to the member for my colleague from St. Paul's, um, who's moving this motion, and I asked her why an inquiry. Because why, for example, in a Halifax courthouse, uh, when two people have pled guilty to murder, the murder of Loretta Saunders, why do we need an inquiry? Why does her family want an inquiry? Why do activists in Halifax still want an inquiry when those two people have pled guilty? Hasn't justice been served? Well, because, Mr. Speaker, violence against Indigenous women is systemic. And that's the real issue here. That's what we need to get at with an inquiry. It's systemic in nature. It's both the cause and is caused by poverty, poor health and mental health, economic insecurity, homelessness, lack of justice, addiction, and low educational attainment for Indigenous women and girls. All of these things place these women in precarious situations where the risk for violence is greater. And there's nothing that can realize justice except for an inquiry into these issues. Now, I'm really proud of our party, of the NDP, for our record on this issue. The member for Nanaimo Cowichan has been a strong and consistent voice when it comes to a need for an inquiry. The member for Churchill, first as our status of women critic, now as our First Nations Inuit and Métis Affairs critic, uh, she brought forward motion M444 that calls for an inquiry into murdered and missing Indigenous women. And this fall, Mr. Speaker, I don't know if you remember, uh, but we had an incredible day one day where the NDP, uh, our MPs, we flooded the House of Commons. And there were enough of us here on that day that we were able to force a vote and take control of the House of Commons, the debate for a day. It was an incredible thing to be a part of. And when you have that opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to take over debate, we could have debated anything. And there are a lot of really important issues out there that deserve the attention of this House. But we chose to debate murdered and missing Indigenous women and the need for an inquiry. And I was so proud to be here that day. And to sit here in my seat and to listen to our first speaker on that debate, my colleague from Abitibi Bay James Nunavik Ayu, himself a residential school survivor who represents communities and comes from a community that knows all too well the issue of murdered and missing Indigenous women. And he stood and he gave an incredible, passionate, emotional speech. And that was one of my proudest moments in this house. I was so proud to know that these women that these families and these communities realized just a little bit of justice that day. Not the justice of an inquiry, but the justice of knowing that there is a group of MPs on this hill, that there is an entire political party that thinks that this issue is important enough that we took control that day and debated this issue, and we're making it a priority. Mr. Speaker, why an inquiry? We've touched on it a little bit. The member for St. Paul's raised several very good reasons. I want to add to those reasons. A national inquiry can actually compel witnesses to truthful testimony. And it can probe government institutions like the RCMP and Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada. And I will give credit to the RCMP. They have done a, an incredible job recently of, of realizing how important this issue is and that they have the power to do something. And they put forward a report where they actually gave us the numbers to show us how incredibly important this is. The numbers were stark, they were chilling, and I credit the RCMP for, for making sure that that was a priority for them. A national inquiry is also important because it can give voice to these families who have lost loved ones and give them the justice that they have been denied. And it can raise the question of systemic racism against Indigenous people in this country. That conversation can be had on a national level. And that conversation is not what you're going to get when these individual moments of justice are realized. 
uh, like in the case I talked about earlier, where two people have pled guilty to murder, we're not talking about the systemic issues in a murder trial. We're talking about the specifics of an incident. But when Aboriginal women and girls are so much more likely to go missing or be killed because of who they are, because of the color of their skin, it's about more than that, 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 that plead of not guilty or guilty in a courthouse, Mr. Speaker, or the finding of not guilty or guilty. And we're not alone in this, Mr. Speaker. There are so many organizations that have come forward, so many governments that have come forward. And in fact, this Conservative government stands alone. They stand alone among governments and the majority of Indigenous communities in opposing a national inquiry. They're outliers, uh, Mr. Speaker. This inquiry is an essential step in confronting the epidemic of murder and missing Indigenous women in Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And realizing that justice um, for the families who've lost their loved ones. So I will be proud to support this motion and the member from St. Paul's can count on my vote in this House, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, we must interrupt the member at this time. Uh, when this matter returns before the House, the Honourable Member for Halifax has three minutes remaining if uh, she chooses to take advantage of that.